like something like that can go terribly wrong if I do wrong. Yeah, this is something that you definitely do not um, want to mess up on. So, hey, what's going on, guys? C Santos here. Today, I have a very special video for you all. I've been planning on building a PC for my own personal use as well as all the new projects that I'll be undertaking. And let's just say that the future of this channel is going to be unreal. But instead of me building it and it being a boring video, I decided to go ahead and ask my fiance Sunny to build it on her own with a little guidance from me, of course. I've built three PCs in my life and Sunny works off a MacBook Pro and she agreed and as you'll see in a moment, it was a bit more difficult than she thought it would be. Before we get started, for those of you wondering what components that we're going to be using for this build, I decided to go ahead and take it an easier route instead of the last time I built a PC and figuring out on my own if everything was gonna work together. I went to Pugent's website. Pugent is a builder of workstations for all kinds of content creators in the world. No, this video is not sponsored by anyone, not by Pugent Systems. I just used their website as a reference and starting point for me to figure out what I want to build in today's market of components. All right, so first things first is the motherboard. So for the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte Vision DP. It has plenty of connectivity for what I'm used to. So all the hard drives that I'll be cramming into it for content creation will work just fine with this. And like I said, I went with Pugin Systems reference guide and they went ahead and paired this thing up with a 5950X CPU by AMD. Now in regards to cooling down that CPU, I went ahead and used the Noctua NH12A air cooler. I know some of you are probably scratching your heads and wondering why did I go with an air cooler when I could have just gone the water cooled route. You know, AIOs, all in ones, they're cheap. I wanted to see the performance of this thing and the Noctua NH12 has been proven time and time again, which is why again, it's literally on Putin Systems website. So I wanted to go ahead and go a different route with this build and see just how efficient and how good it is for the price. Now for the RAM, I did go with a 64 gigabyte kit from Trident. It's their Neo kit. It is it does have RGB. I probably won't be using it, maybe just keeping it one color. It's perfect for exactly what I need it for. It's not overkill. I think 64 gigabytes has been proven time and time again that it's a perfect amount for Premiere Pro users and even After Effects users, those that are using a lot of memory intensive programs. And now for the main drive that's going to be holding all of my programs, Windows 10, I went with the Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte, just enough, actually more than enough to hold all the programs that I'll be using. I won't be gaming on this. It does have extra room for me to hold other files. However, I did go with a two terabyte 980 Pro as well. I went ahead and got that for caching purposes. As many of you know, or if you don't know, uh, Premiere Pro and other programs, you want to always have a, a place where you can cache your files that's separate from where the program is running. It makes the programs run a lot more efficiently. It's a good workflow to always have whenever you're editing projects. And now, obviously, for the graphics. As many of you may know, um, sourcing parts, especially PC components, have been pretty difficult. This part specifically, GPU, has was the most difficult thing for me to sort because I tried going on the websites during launch dates, like on Fridays and Thursdays. I tried all of that beforehand, and I unfortunately had to go through a scalper in order to get this. So in this case, I got the 6900 XT, which originally retailed for $999. And finally, the case. And as you already know, I went ahead and used Pugin Systems' own case for this build. It's actually not their case. It's made by Fractal Design. It's the Fractal Design Defined 7 case in white on white with a glass panel on the side. I went ahead and used this case just because it was, it was aesthetically, it looked good. It wasn't expensive. It wasn't super cheap. It had all the ports that I needed, uh, USB-C and uh, USB 3.1, all of that ready to go. So I was ready to start using it to plug in like my phone, to download the files that I use, for example, in this PC build. I put a link to all the components mentioned in this build down in the description below. So if you guys want to take a look for yourself and see like what I'm doing, maybe it's something you want to do similarly in regards to building your own PC, you can take a look and see what the current prices are. But let's go ahead and get this build started. So first things first, was getting the computer case out carefully. Is there something in here? Oh, that's uh, the zip ties and, and all Why that. Why is there like a million screws? I think that this is gonna be way too hard. Why? Because there's a million screws. I don't think it should take a million screws to build these things. 
Oh, you're in this deep already, so I think I don't think there's any turning back. This is where Sunny needed my help. This thing is actually quite heavy on its own. So, uh, so far, what do you think? With all the stuff you have to pull out, like, what do you think so far? It's a box. <laughs> of course it's a box. Yeah, but I don't know what goes in it, so... That's the next step. Put stuff in it. Next step, you got your case. Now you gotta get all your other things. You gotta get the motherboard and everything, so let's do it. After getting all the accessories out of the box, next is prepping the case for placement of the motherboard. Okay, so now we're moving on into installing the motherboard. And uh, yeah, this is something that you definitely do not um, want to mess up on. So um, let me know if you're comfortable doing this, but I will let you do it. I mean, it's the whole point of this video is I wanna, I wanna show people that someone who doesn't know what they're doing can do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, so first of all, we need to get the case open before we can put this in there. Just be careful, remember that's glass. You definitely do not want to draw. just take it off? Yeah, take it all the way off, because we don't need to put that back on until we're done. So now um, we need to make sure the standoffs are correct. This case already has the correct placement for the standard ATX motherboard, but does come with extra standoffs for different placements in case your board is different. All right, so we're getting the motherboard out. This is a very sensitive part. You want to be really careful with this. So it comes in. It comes in some uh, anti-static plastic. Next is prepping the motherboard and removing the insane amount of clear film that is in the tiniest of places. So what happens if you, like what could go wrong with like the motherboard when you're installing it? If you don't mount it correctly from these mounting points here, you could like bend it. So that's why you gotta make sure that you have all of the motherboard standoffs have to be in the right spot which I believe there are already on this, so you just gotta make sure they are. This is where you, of course, need to be very careful to mount the board correctly without dropping it or scratching it on the bottom. There you go, and that's it. Now, you wanna make sure you correctly screw down the motherboard and do not over tighten the screws or you will be screwed, no pun intended. Once you have the motherboard correctly mounted, now comes the fun part, installing the CPU. All right, now that she got the screws all nice and buttoned down, we're gonna go ahead and install the CPU. So be extremely careful with this, since this is a very um, sensitive thing. There are everything sensitive? These two parts are the probably the most sensitive things. Everything else is pretty much, like, just gotta be particular about it, so. so sensitive. Yes. Okay, be careful, don't flip the, okay, you can throw that in there, but just don't flip that. No, 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 don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't flip it. No, because look, it's literally right here. Like yeah, if you, so and, and there's pins on the bottom. If they get bent, we're screwed. So here we got a Ryzen 9 5950X. That's going to go on this board. Um, so would you like to do the honors? Sure. How much does right. this cost? Uh, $729. $700? Yeah. For this? Yes. That's the, that's the brain. Without that, none of this works. Okay, so where do I put it? All right, so. There is only one way you can put this in, all right? It goes there. It goes there, yes, that's true. It does go right there, but you need to position the chip the right way. Also, What's this? that's a sticker. Oh, okay. That's just, you stick it on the outside of the box if you want, on the, of the case if you want. So there's only one way you can put this in, all right? And you see how there's a little notch right here? Make sure you take your time. Find that notch that helps you orient the CPU in the right way as well as a notch on the board. All right, so you're gonna, that little notch right there, you see a little notch? That's gonna match up with that same notch, but you're not gonna force it in, it should just fall right in. And you gotta, ma you gotta match it in like that. You don't wanna bend those pins. So now that you went ahead and put it in, <laughs> you're gonna wanna go ahead and just pull this latch down, downwards, like that. And that's how you know it's in. Again, there's no, if you try to flip it and put it in, it won't go in. So like they made it where it's impossible to mess up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, push it down and then it's gonna all the way down, the way down and it's gonna lock in behind this little thing right here. You see how it like latches around? It, it like has to latch around. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. So you got it all latched in. Boom. There you go. Next, we're gonna go ahead and drop in the CPU cooler. This is a little more trickier. 
Um, again, you'll want to follow the instructions. So we actually have to remove the stock mounting bracket for the, that was actually on the motherboard because we have a different cooler. So you want to make sure you do that. Again, always follow the instructions that came with your hardware. Now, once you install the CPU, you're good to now mount the cooler. All right, next step. Tracks. <laughs> this is no, this is a uh, thermal paste, and this has to be applied to the CPU. What this does, it actually allows the heat to transfer from material to material a lot more efficiently because uh, it smooths out the gaps in the, in the metal since they're not perfect. You sure you put it on the CPU? Yeah. I feel like that's just a bit odd. A pea-sized drop is always the best. What happens if you put it on your skin? Uh, you probably want to wash it off. I wouldn't say it's like... Is it like actual like glue? Like when it helps like actual other things stick besides computer parts? In short, it's not glue. It's like a putty. Now you just want to go ahead and tighten it up until it stops. So now we're installing the cooler. And yep, very specific on these types of coolers. Until it stops, yeah. No, no excessive force, just until it stops. Now go ahead and do the other one. CPU cooler is now installed. And now it's just plugging and wiring all these things like the fans, the power supply, the hard drives you gotta connect. Like it's just getting all of that now installed. I mean, what do you think so far? I and mean, what do you think of getting the motherboard on, the CPU and the, and the cooler on? Like. I think I know everything about computers now. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So once we got the air cooler installed, we're ready to install the memory as well as the RAM. This is pretty straightforward, guys. You can't really mess this up. I'm literally just making sure that the RAM slots are oriented the right way. And last but not least, is mounting the GPU. This thing is massive, first of all, guys. Didn't realize how big it was compared to the motherboard until I installed it. Now comes the fun part and wiring it all together. In order for us to do that, we're gonna actually have to install the power supply unit, but I did not get this on camera. So I'm going to link to some playlists of videos if you guys are interested in wiring up the power supply. Also, one thing I do recommend is just have a look at the manual that comes with it. I literally reference this manual throughout this build like five or six times because I wanted to make sure that all these new components that I never used in my life or even touched were installed correctly. So just make sure the manual's there for a reason. And by the way, guys, I am running Windows 10. Windows 11 hasn't been approved for um, a lot of people in certain industries. So like if you're in the content creation industry um, or video production, film industry, you really don't want to be using Windows 11. A lot of programs like Premiere aren't really fully compatible yet. So you might be wondering where I'm at right now, by the way, I'm actually in my studio. There's actually a wall right behind me. So behind this wall is this massive warehouse that I actually built. It's pretty amazing. I can't wait to show you guys just how I built this space out. It's truly unreal. So it's insane just how much production stuff that you can do with the time that you spend and learning new equipment and technology so i'm looking forward to showing you guys just how i built this place out in the next series of videos that i'll be doing and if you have any questions or an idea that you might have for a future video on this channel leave it down in the comments below i've actually been in the middle of redoing my whole channel from rebranding to the type of content that i'll be showing in the future here so like i said a lot of it has to do with what you're seeing right now in this video so keep in mind and as always thank you guys for watching leave a like and subscribe. And of course, have a good day.